So this is number three from the 2012 AP Calculus exam, non-calculator multiple choice question. It says find the indefinite integral of secant x times tangent of x with respect to x. Now, there is an antiderivative formula that says the integral of secant of x tangent of x taken with respect to x is secant of x plus c. So the easiest way to get this answer is obviously to just know that formula and have it memorized. But it is one of the more obscure integral formulas, so maybe you haven't memorized it. Uh, if that's the case, you can kind of work backwards with guess and check here. Um, if you know that taking the derivative of these options is going to need to yield you what we see as the integrand in the original problem, we can work backwards and, and do the problem that way. And so that's exactly what I did. I, I started with choice A here. I'm trying to take the derivative of secant of x. Now there is a derivative formula for secant of x. The derivative of secant of x you maybe have memorized is secant of x tangent of x. But if you haven't done that, you should know that secant of x can be rewritten as 1 over cosine of x. If you try to take the derivative of this, you've got a couple options. You can either go with a quotient rule of it within this form, or you can recognize this cosine of x is raised to the first power in the denominator, and if you move it into the numerator, it's cosine of x to the negative first. And, and that's the form of this function that I'm going to use to take the derivative of it. In. And so if I go ahead and do a chain rule now with this, I'm multiplying by the negative 1, I'm subtracting 1 from that power, and I'm copying this inner function, cosine of x, into that initial part of my chain rule. And then here's the end of my chain rule where I multiply by the derivative of the inner function. Inner function's cosine of x, derivative of cosine of x, negative sine of x. This is messy. Uh, I want to try to clean it up a little bit. And so I notice I have a negative times a positive times a negative. My answer is going to be positive. So that lets me get rid of the signs. Um, I do have a negative power. Well, when I have a negative power, I can move across the fraction bar into the denominator and change the sign on the exponent to a positive. So that's what I did with this portion of my derivative. Uh, my sine of x stayed in the numerator. And like we talked about a few seconds ago, you don't notice any negatives carried down here because it's a negative times a negative, yielding a positive answer. I looked at this and I thought, well, I see this original expression involved tangent. So how can I take this fraction and turn it into something that involves tangent? Well, tangent is sine over cosine. So if I break this up into sine of x over cosine of x, I would just have to multiply that by 1 over cosine of x in order to have this new expression equivalent to what I had back here. And 1 over cosine of x you might recognize as being equivalent to secant of x. So we've just kind of verified by guessing and checking that the since the derivative of secant of x is secant of x tangent of x, the antiderivative of secant of x tangent of x taken with respect to x is going to take us back to secant of x, which is why our answer here is option A.